My leech elect, I confess myself more than a little uneasy. The scroll draws closer with each passing day and will never evacuate all Utopia without the Countess of Regalia's financial aid. She won't even come here to discuss the matter. I've never known a titled noble less interested in affairs of state, no one less inclined to help her people. Then there's the ship that just entered orbit. We can keep the population we have safe let alone take on more migrants, but we can turn the craft away. It's been in flight for more than a century. The world from which it came might not even exist anymore. Fear not, my lovely Ethelene. The vessel over which you fret may yet be what saves us. I have consulted the passenger manifest and, among the usual crop of topians and exics, there is a bane. The banes went exinct while he slumbered in cryo. He is the last of his kind. Do you know what that means, my precious consort? I can guess. You think we can lure the Countess here with the promise of an encounter with an exotic species? You might be right too. That corpulent regalian degenerate is addicted to novelty. But what are we going to do with her once she arrives? We can show her the crisis, but we can't make her open her coffers and help. The wealth of regalia is just one way the Countess might aid us. There are other ways she might be of use. Ways that aren't hindered by her corruption. Quite the opposite in fact. Trust me, Ethelene. I have been at this a long, long time. Don't take this the wrong way sunshine, but I was told this was a private exit, provided so I could grieve the death of my entire bloody species in peace. So whatever you want, tall dark and ugly, I strongly suggest you try it on with someone who's having a better day. Forgive me for disrupting your morning. I am Orphat, a facilitator for the Emperor-elect Larthos III. I've been asked to escort you to the Palazzo Nouveau. Please. Come with me. I will explain everything en route. I don't actually have a choice, do I? Not really, no. Happenstance and the advance of the scroll have placed you at the fulcrum between Utopia and Regalia. But you are waste not to resist. Kyum. Fate awaits. So, they think they can draw me out with the promise of a new toy. They don't know me very well, do they? I don't grovel, I take. And you, my lovely Gemurai, shall be the hand I use to snatch this new bauble. Go. Go forth and seize this bane for me. Let us find out why he's so interesting.
Greetings. Thank you for coming to the palace. I know this isn't the best time to ask you for anything, but I have no choice. I'm Emperor Lathos. As I'm sure my men explained to you, you might be of interest to the Countess of Regalia and, right now, we need all the leverage we can get. I have to admit, I was expecting someone older though. More experienced in the ways of the world. What is your name boy? I'm Klaxon. Klaxon Varesco. And I'd ask you not to be fooled by my boyish good looks. I'm over 400 years of age. The Bane are a long-lived people. Incidentally, your man did more than allude to my significance to the Countess. He made mention of the scroll. 400 years is a long time to learn something, and I've learned to recognize fear. This scroll inspires terror. Tell me what it is, and I might be of more use than you imagine. You're correct that the scroll is terrifying. A thing we can scarcely consider, let alone describe. It is. Wait. Do you see that glimmering? Shit. Get down. Chime chime. Time to rise. Good. You're awake. I was concerned I'd misjudged your bane physiology and permanently injured you. Welcome, Clax and Varesco, to the dungeons of Planet Regalia. I am the Gemu Rizeras and you are now a prisoner of the Countess Valastra. Right. Just give me a minute. I've heard of the Order of the Gemurai, the Crystalline Knights of Regalia. I wasn't expecting to meet one dressed like a gay matador though. Listen bucko, your little stunt probably killed the Emperor himself, so I strongly suggest you let me down before you make this any worse for yourself. Haha. <laughs> you are brave, I'll give you that. But you are also unarmed, tired and defenseless. If I release the gravity chains binding you to the ceiling, will you agree to come speak with the Countess without putting up a pointless fight? Fine. At this point I'd agree to anything, just to stop being at crotch height to you. Then it is done. You're welcome. Thanks. Just one other thing. I will speak with your Countess, but on my own terms, not yours. So, you're the Bane I've heard so much about. Welcome to my humble abode Mr. Varesco. You just caught me on the way to lunch. It's fascinating, I must say, to see the man the Emperor thought he could bait me with. The last of your kind, yet why should I care? This question, so seemingly simple, is the reason I've requisitioned you. Tell me, Mr. Varesco. What makes you so special? I was hoping you could tell me. Ever since I came to the Galactic Center I've been Mr. Popular. But I'll tell you what's, really, baffling me. You could have just come to Utopia if you were curious about me and given the Emperor the help he was asking for. You're obviously rich enough. Instead, you had your Gemurai assassin blow up a wing of the palace and abduct me. He's taking a little nap by the way, so I recommend you make your explanation really, really good. Oh please. You wouldn't hurt me. A gentleman like you wouldn't strike a lady. Besides, it's not as simple as you seem to think. I rule regalia for the Utopian Empire, but only with the consent of the local parliament. If I helped Utopia at the moment regalia stands to gain political dominance, it would be my head in the noose. Metaphorically, I hope. You're saying that Regalia would use the destruction of Utopia to take over the Empire? And you'd allow this to save your own skin? Don't judge me pretty boy. Right now, I'm a prisoner to political necessity. A pampered, spoiled prisoner but a prisoner nonetheless. When the dust settles on this debacle, I might be Empress, with Lathos himself groveling at my feet. Oh, don't look confused. He's not dead. I'm not stupid enough to set a precedent for regicide. 
Zeres will have calibrated the explosion carefully. It's a courtesy Lathos would not have shown me. Do you have any idea what he would have done to me if I'd arrived on Utopia and failed to cave to his demands? You're suggesting he'd have had you killed? Don't take this the wrong way, but he didn't seem the type. Not just killed. Sacrificed to the scroll. You have to understand, the scroll is intelligent. Intelligent enough to make demands. And what it wants is someone like me, someone irredeemably corrupt. It wants an anthropoid vessel large and wicked enough to contain its consciousness. If Utopia capitulates, it will spare the planet, perhaps even the Empire. Lathos thinks I know nothing of his scheming, but Regalia practically invented the game he's playing. Of course I know, which is why I won't set foot on Utopia until this thing with the scroll is resolved. It seems the scroll scares you as deeply as it scares the Emperor. Very well. That's how I'll buy my freedom from both of you and your machinations. Nobody seems to be able to tell me what the scroll is, so send me to it instead. We Bane are an inventive and powerful people. Let me loose on this crisis and see if I can't bring things to a close. If I fail, I'll be dead and you and the Emperor can find some other game piece to play with. But if I succeed, you won't have to. What say you? An interesting proposal. Your success would not only rid the Empire of a terrible threat, but would put me in a position to take the credit. It would also allow me to see what all the fuss around you was about. Meanwhile, your failure would rob me of nothing but an irritating mystery. Yes. I think you and I have a deal, Mr. Varesco. With one small proviso. I will send Zeres with you to ensure you really do face the scroll and don't simply flee into the endless night of space. He can take you in my private starship. Thank you, Countess Valastra. And don't be too quick to write me off. I think I might surprise you. Take a look out the window. That, my friend, is the scroll. A sentient biomass large enough to consume planets. Still feeling confident. Actually, yes. Are you ready to teleport me to the surface? If I'm going to deal with the scroll, I need to be in a position to talk with it face to face. Well, not that it has a face, but you know what I mean. You know. You crazy bastard, I think I might actually miss you, brief though our acquaintance has been. You punch like a freight ship entering atmosphere, you think you're invincible, and you play the politicos game with the madness they lack. You'd have made a fine gemurai. The teleport's active now. Good luck to you. Friend. Greetings. I am now addressing the consciousness of the scroll. I suspect your first instinct is to kill me on sight, but you ought to listen. I have a proposal for you, and I think you'll see the wisdom in it. So, that would appear to be an end to the matter. I waited for Clax and Varesco for 52 hours, but he never returned. I'm forced to conclude the scroll killed him. Of course, questions remain. Indeed. Not least why my own faithful servant, Orfex, betrayed me to you, Countess. He was the only one who could have told you of Klaxon's arrival, yet I can see no reason why he would have. Oh, don't be so simple. Orfax didn't betray you. It was your consort, Atheline, 
who reported to me. She has some interesting beliefs about the flaws in democratic feudalism and some misplaced sense that, as a fellow woman, I'd be sympathetic. Obviously, I was more than happy to exploit her political naivete, but after this ludicrous affair, I think her usefulness has come to an end. The real question is what was special about Claxon? How did he end up at the center of all this in the first place? Now who's being simple? I gambled on you assuming there was something noteworthy about Mr. Varesco, but he was really just convenient bait. His species died of the slow plague, leaving him unique and therefore intriguing, but that's all. The mystery was always empty and there was nothing special at all about Claxon himself. Nothing special at all? I wouldn't say that. Hello everyone. I'm Claxon Varesco and, yes, I did just teleport here without the aid of technology. The scroll wanted an anthropoid vessel, so I offered myself. Now we are one. But make no mistake. I'm still very much in charge. If you'll check your real-time star charts, you'll notice the scroll biomass has stopped growing towards Utopia and the rest of the central worlds. I trust I now have your undivided attention. You have it. But how are you containing the scroll? How did you convince it to bond with you in the first place? Its consciousness requires a size and level of moral corruption at least equal to that of the Countess. Without these things, we know it cannot possess a host. Never mind how. I want to know why. The answer to both questions is rage and grief. Well, rage, grief and the unusually dense cellular biology of the Bane species. The point is that the scroll can't distinguish between a soul corrupted by selfishness and evil and one corrupted by sorrow and anger. This is how I tempted it in and, once it had bonded with me, it was too late for it. My soul wasn't the right kind of corrupt and it couldn't take me over. I have its power, yet remain myself. You should be asking, however, who I'm angry at. I can guess. Lathos mentioned the slow plague. Correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't Utopia have a chance to send medical aid to the outer world centuries ago? A chance it didn't take. Decadent, conniving and clever too. I think I like you more every time we cross paths, Countess. Yes, I knew the planet Banish, my homeworld, was doomed when I left. I also knew who was to blame. I even knew about the scrawl since the whole reason for Utopia's resource hoarding was its fear of the thing. Pretending ignorance was the hardest part of this whole charade. The point is, instead of saving the lives of its citizens, Utopia kept its brightest minds in the galactic center in the vain hope one of them might cure the scroll itself. A cruel plan, and one not even justified by eventual success. Which brings me to my price for holding back the scroll. What I want is very simple. I want the empire. Enough of this treasonous lunacy. Countess, order your Gemurai to slay this man at once. And why would I do that? His only cross at you. He seems to quite fancy me, and I may yet get something out of this power play. Your instincts are quite right, Countess Valastra. You stand to gain by this. The Emperor can't just step down and hand me the reins of power. There has to be an election, one in which I'll run unopposed. After all, with my asthma absorbed by the scrawl and the far-off worlds unable to send their representatives in time, the pool of titled nobles who are allowed to run for emperor is very limited. Unfortunately, I'm not a titled noble. There is, however, one expedient way to remedy that. A way that, when I take the throne as emperor, will make you the empress. You're talking about a marriage alliance. You'd really bond yourself to this heinous dirigible for the sake of the crown. Of course he would. Unlike certain other people in this room, he's obviously a man of distinguished tastes. Well, a super being of distinguished tastes anyway. And yes, Mr. Varesco. Your proposal suits me very well. Though I'll expect to be treated as more than a political convenience. If I'm to be your ticket to power, I will have payment for that ticket in full. I'd consider nothing less my lovely countess. 
As for you, Lathos, it seems you have a choice to make. I prefer this to be a bloodless revolution, but you are standing in a room with a very deadly Gemurai assassin and the power-hungry beauty who commands him. I must take my leave, and you must decide whether you'd rather lose the crown from your head, or the head from your shoulders. Wait. What do you mean take your leave? Where are you going? Everywhere. After all, it's my universe now. <laughs>